On the path towards any goal, there is a lowest moment, a time where the effort spent is the highest, but the reward is the lowest. And feelings of doubt and insecurity start to creep in. You feel like you should stop pursuing the goal. But at the same time, if you stick through, this is where the highest outsized benefits are. And I call this moment hitting the grind. Grinding is commonplace in video games. One of my favorite examples is Terraria, which I used to play all the time with my friend Alejandro during one of the summers of our high school year. And I remember in particular the amount of grinding that we had to do in that game. We spent hours playing every single day and having to mine for ore, kill bosses that we'd already killed before, and craft potions just so we could make it to the next level of power and start the process all over again. So once we got out of this grind, however, we could reach a new level of power. But in real life, many of our goal pursuits and skill improvements, they look like what they do in games, but they're harder to motivate us to get out of that slump. The difference is in video games, there's a whole bunch of ways that video games are designed well in order to get us past that slump that's so difficult. Which is why in this video, I wanted to go through five insights that I've had from video games in order to get out of the slump that we find in real life goal pursuits. Welcome back to Level Up League, the series where we explore the world of self-improvement through the lens of gamification. So one of the things that I thought would be fun to apply this to is my goal of cutting down to 165 pounds. You might've noticed I look a little more chiseled than I usually do in some of my videos, or you don't and then you're just like, you're just like, Aiden, you look like a freaking potato like you always do. But that's besides the point. The reason that I wanted to do cutting as an example is everyone's had the experience of starting a diet, getting put in some of grandma's cooking, and then taking a break for life. So I thought that dieting, because it's so hard, would be a perfect example of how we can apply these video game insights. So the first insight is to remind yourself why you started. And to explain this, I'm gonna tell you a story, which was, about halfway through my cutting journey so far, I was getting dinner at one of my friends Joaquin's house and I didn't know what they were gonna serve until I walked into the room. And I was hoping for something rich in protein, low in fat and low in sugar. How could that possibly happen <laughs> when you're going to like someone's house? Because what was put in front of me except a delicious chicken pot pie. And it could smell the thyme, the rosemary inside of it. I could see the white milky sauce that was inside of it that had like reflections from the light in it. I could see the peas, the carrots, and the soft steam coming off of it because it just got taken out of the oven. I was so tempted to just gobble it down into absolute hecking oblivion. Luckily, video games can teach us how by going back to why we want to pursue a goal, we can get past that slump because RPG games often support a quest log that breaks down larger, more meaningful goals into individual projects and tasks. Many video games are rich with stories that make us care about the characters and the goals that we're pursuing, which gets us past that slump. And we can do all of these things in real life by reminding ourselves why we got started when things get tough. So when I began my cut, I wrote down a whole list of why I wanted to do a cut in the first place. Some of those reasons were just look better. I also love the gym. I love the process of cutting, maintaining, bulking, increasing in weight that you can do. So I wanted to do that. And I've stagnated in the gym over the last few years and knew that doing cutting, bulking, and maintaining, which I hadn't been doing before, might help me get out of that slump. And also I just wanted to do something hard. I just thought it would be fun. So all of these reasons, when I was standing in front of that chicken pot pie, when I reminded myself of them, they really helped me not take a massive serving, but rather just have a normal sized amount, which you can do in any of your goal endeavors. Insight two is to be mindful of the middle. The hardest part in any goal pursuit is in the middle when inspiration is gone, but you aren't getting motivated by the end being near. 
So I'm in the middle portion of my cut right now, actually, and it's not much fun. <laughs> but many video games get players through this period by making the middle slightly lower in difficulty or giving players more rewards than usual or throwing in a surprise. And in real life, we can do the same thing by anticipating when the middle is going to come and doing everything we can to make it easier. So one of the things that is making it easier for me is I know I'm going to be going back to my parents' house house during part of the middle of my cut. And there's something you should know about my parents, which is they are health nuts. Because while I'm there, processed food becomes an endangered species. They eat salad like it's oxygen. They consider dark chocolate a cheat dessert. Last thing is my mom exercises so much that she thinks a 5k is a warm up for her real workout. And why is this helpful? It's helpful because it'll be so much easier to eat well when I'm surrounded by literal superhumans back at home instead of Cornell dining halls with tons of students eating fried food and stuff. So that is going to help a lot in navigating that middle section. And you can do the same thing with you by figuring out when the middle is going to be and adding in other rewards, surprises, or making it easier. Insight three is to grind with others. Many video games get us through that low point by getting us to do that low point with others. Like in Terraria, I was grinding with my friend Alejandro, which really bonded us together during those lower points. And I'm doing this right now by cutting with my brother. Every time we call, we get to bond over our experiences cutting. My brother struggles with binge eating, so he always has the funniest of stories. Like one of the times he called me and literally just said, Aiden, why do they put nuts in such large jars? <laughs> because he ate the whole jar. And then another time he told me he was taking a break from cutting. And when I asked him why, he said, I'm going to grandma's house. She's a great cook. So yeah, he, he just completely failed once. I think he said he had like 5,000 calories or something. All these funny stories are really bonding us through our cut together and making it more fun to do. Insight four is focus on a different skill or goal while in the grind of another one. Many video games include main quests as well as side quests. And when the main quest becomes too hard or you get bored, you can go on those side quests instead to uh, uh, spice the things up. Like uh, in Terraria, that would often look like building a silly structure or killing a mini boss or something before going back to the main thing. And in real life, we can do the same thing by focusing on a different skill or goal when we hit the grind in one. So I'm doing this well in my cut by improving my pixel art drawing at the same same time. I recently got iPad Air and I've been having way too much fun learning how to draw pixel art better. I'm going to flash some of the drawings that I've made on screen, like me holding a jar of peanut butter in glorious sunlight. I made some Terraria-like weapons in honor for my love for the game and also some food. Uh, now, I realize this probably wasn't the best thing to draw considering the goal I've been talking about, but regardless, my pixel art in my tough moments has been invaluable. Insight five is to stop relying on motivation, which is a catch-22 because video games don't actually do this well. We play video games because we're they're inherently fun. Motivation isn't usually a problem, but there are times in real life where you're going to hit the grind and no matter what you do, you could use all four of these other insights, you're still not going to have motivation. And when this happens, the only thing that you can do is change your mind or act anyways, because action creates motivation. There have been so many times where I haven't felt like doing something and then I told myself I would do it for just five minutes and then that five minutes of doing it actually gets me to start doing the thing. And there's three ways that we can build action without motivation, which are discipline, passion, and habits. Discipline is the classic doing something when you don't feel like it. It's the, the David Goggins route. It's the stay hard route. And unlike most people think, discipline isn't innate. You can actually build it. It is a skill. It's a false belief to say, I'm not disciplined. It's better to say, I'm not disciplined yet because 
because there have been so many times in my cutting where I don't feel like sticking to the plan and I simply say, tough luck, you're doing it anyways. But the reason I'm able to do that is because I've built discipline through all of these other habits in my life, like going to the gym and sleeping well and meditating and all this other stuff. Second thing you can do is to do action without motivation is just become passionate for the thing, which is love for doing it in itself regardless of extrinsic reward. Passion's what fuels a lot of my cutting because I wouldn't exactly describe cutting as fun. <laughs> I would describe it more as I'm doing it because I'm passionate about the process of bulking, cutting, and maintaining in order to better my gym goals. So the increased hunger, the slow progress, losing more and more fat, and the challenge of staying on the plan, I'm just passionate about it and it keeps me going. And then finally, habits require less motivation because they're subconscious. So one of the best ways I've implemented this on my cut is by eating at the same time most days. I usually eat at like 11 or 12 and then six or seven for dinner. And this makes it so much easier to decide when I'm gonna eat instead of agonizing over any time and thinking like, oh, I can eat something right now because I know what I'm gonna eat. It's just during those two times, most of the time, obviously I'm flexible. But now it's your turn. If you can apply all five of these insights, I am confident you will be significantly significantly more effective at making it through the grind and reaping the outsized rewards that you can get once you get through it. And who knows, maybe diamonds are on the other side. If you like this video, you should get my gamification resource list, which help you turn your real life into the most fun game imaginable. You will boost your productivity, creativity, and learning by creating your superhero alter ego, defining your quests, cultivating your skills, and fighting your bad guys. As always, have a fantastic rest of your day, eat some peanut butter, and bye-bye.